All right, here is the, uh, let's go back to black. So here's the uh, third undefined term. First one was point, second one was um, line, and then this one is a plane. Spelled like airplane, but it doesn't really mean that. This is basically what a plane looks like. When they draw this in your book, this is what it's going to look like. Let's... It'll look slanted like that. For some reason, they, that's the way they like to draw their planes. Now, a plane is basically just a whole bunch of lines. It's lines everywhere, okay? All line basically on a flat surface. So if you think of a flat surface that goes on forever and ever, because lines go on forever, don't they? Yeah. So if a plane is made up of a bunch of lines, then the plane's going to go on forever. For instance, look above us. There's a ceiling right here. It's a flat surface, isn't it? That's Right. It's not a plane itself, but it represents where a plane is located. Okay, remember, a plane is just it's a flat place in space somewhere. There's planes all over the place in this room. There's a plane that could be going like this, plane going like this, a plane going all kinds of different ways. Okay, That just represents one plane if you look above us. Now, if you look at the ceiling, though, it comes to a point where it actually stops, doesn't it? What does a plane do, though? It keeps on going forever. So the ceiling itself is not a plane. It represents where a plane's located, right? Because a plane would technically keep on going forever in every single direction. Now, if you look on here, we're a little restricted writing in the two-dimensional form here. This looks like it has an edge to it, doesn't it? Yeah. But technically, if that's a plane, it keeps on going forever. So we just have to use our imagination, right? So remember it had the lines, had the arrows, that means it keeps on going forever? Just imagine that this plane just keeps going. So it's not like the plane goes here, and then it stops, and then you're not on the plane anymore. Make sense? It just keeps on going. But I just couldn't keep drawing it bigger and bigger and bigger because we'd never get anything accomplished if that's what we spent all day doing, okay? How do we label a plane? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Did you ask that question? No? <laughs> all right, so uh, let's call this, I don't know, let's use a different letter. Let's use Q. What we do is we use a capital letter and we stick it in one of the corners. It doesn't have to be in the top right-hand corner. It could be down here in the bottom right, bottom left, top left. It doesn't make any difference. If it's stuck somewhere in the corner, then um, that's the name of the plane. So I could just name this plane, what do you think? Q. That's it. Just name it plane Q. doesn't mean that's point Q. It doesn't mean there's a point associated with it. It's just the letter. It's just the name of the plane. Now, if you look in the book, they make that letter a little fancy looking, kind of italicized, a little, little bit of a fancier looking font than your plain regular font that they use. Um, I'm not going to try to make it super fancy. I just use a capital letter when I draw it on my paper. Okay, So it's a capital letter, but there's no dot associated with it. It's not a point. It's just the name of the plane. Everybody with me? There's another way to name this. I'll do this in a different color. What color do you want? Let's go this orange. So watch this. I'm going to put some points in this plane, A, B, and C. Now tell me something about, remember those fancy that fancy word we learned just a few minutes ago with the C? Collinear, remember that one? The collinear? Are A, B, and C collinear? No, they don't all line the same line, do they? But they, um, so they're what? They're not collinear, they're what? They're non-collinear. If I have three non-collinear points, do I have that with A, B, and C here? Yeah. Three non-collinear points will always make up a plane. You follow me? Three, you might want to jot that down, even though I didn't write it. Three non-collinear points form a plane. So here's three points. They're not on the same line. or Yeah, they're not all on the same line. And um, so that forms this plane. Well, that's another way to name this plane. It's a second way to name the plane. You know how on the line we did the lowercase letter? That was one way to do it. Or we could use two points on the line. Same thing with a plane. We could use the capital letter by itself if we wanted to, or we could use three non-collinear points. So I could call this, let's do this out here, plane what? ABC, right, use all three points. We don't put any line over top of it, we just put the word plane out in front. There's no symbol, there's no fancy little picture that goes with it, okay? We just put the word plane out in front and then ABC. What do you think about the order of A, B, and C? doesn't matter, okay? I could have called this. Give me something else. BAC, CAB, BCA, CBA. It, it doesn't matter, does it? Okay? It doesn't matter as long as you use those three points. You got it? Even if I had an, a fourth point in here, even if I had a D, I could still call this plane ABC. 
But I got other options now, don't I? I could call it what? A, C, D, D, C, A, D, B, A, and you could keep on going for quite a while, couldn't you? All right? No. How many points did I say? No. I said what? Three. Three and only three. All right? So if I'm going to use points that lie on the plane, I'm only using three points. Now, if I have 17 points here, I got a lot of choices, but I'm only going to use three of them. You got it, David? Two points name a line, three points name a plane, right? Or you could use just that capital letter stuck in the corner. But this isn't a point, though, is it? That Q does not represent a point. Blake? If, if only three points can into a plane, how is that right there that has four points? How is that a plane? Well, I said I could have 17 points. I could have a million points. How many points are in a plane? An infinite number, right? An infinite <laughs> infinity, right? That's a number. Infinity is a number. There's an infinite number of points in this plane right here. But if I wanted to name the plane, right? I could have a, I could have a million points on this plane if I wanted to. But if I wanted to say, oh, name that plane right there, then you just choose how many? You just choose three of them. That's it, okay? doesn't matter how many there are in the plane. You just choose three of them to name the plane. If it's in the plane, it's in the plane, but it's not included in the name of the plane, okay? We're just trying to name the plane. All these other points are still included. Listen, hush, guys, I'll take care of the explanation. All these other points are still included in the plane, but I'm just naming it, all right? I'm just saying this is called plane ABC or plane CFE or plane DCE, right? That doesn't mean just because I call it plane DCE that A, B, and F are not in the plane. They're still in the plane. I just pick any three of the points that I want to name that plane. That's it. Make sense? Okay. What's that? Non-collinear. So what if I had this? Watch this. Let's see if I can get these to hit. That's pretty close. It's not great, but what if I had a point right here? What haven't I used at EF? G. Let's use G. Let's say that lies. Could I call this plane plane uh, B A G? No. no. Why not? What's that? No. I st no. I use three to name a plane. Could I call it plane? Could I call this whole plane right here plane B A G? That's right because it's collinear. I can only pick what non-collinear points to name the plane. Because if you think about this, watch. Let me do a little demonstration. You won't be able to see this on YouTube, but um, what's that? So watch. What are you gonna say? Oh, um, look at this uh, plane right here. If I had, actually, let's think of it like here. All right, we know you're here. What if I had, watch, a point right here? One right here, one right here. Tell me something about all three of those points. Collinear. They're collinear, right, because they lie on what? The on the line. same line, okay? Now watch. I could have a plane that goes like this. Pretend I had a big old piece of cardboard or something, right? It represented a plane. I could have a plane that goes like this. That would be one plane. But guess what else I could do? I could take that piece of cardboard and tilt it and have the plane going like this and still going through those three points, couldn't I? Do you see it? So my plane could be going through like this. Or I could tilt it and it would be going through like this. So look at those three points, B, A, and G. Is there only one plane that goes through those points, B, A, and G? No, I could have a, I could have a plane that cuts it in all kinds of directions. That's why we don't use collinear points. That's why we use what? Non-collinear points. So that would be a line. Th that line is in the plane, okay? But we would not name this plane B, A, G because there's all kinds of planes. Now, I can't really draw this here, but, I mean, there would be a plane, like, going through like this. I don't know. Can you imagine it? Right? Going at a different angle. Think of a big, flat piece of cardboard or something. You could have it going through that thing at all kinds of angles, couldn't you? So there's a lot more planes that could be going through BAG than just this one right here. Make sense? All right. Uh, we spent way too much time on that already. Let's talk about this let's we'll keep the same picture up here let's just go different color let's go purple let's go purple what if I did this let's go to E 
about right there. And let's try to go about right there. I'm going to have to draw a couple things in here. Here's a line. And watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to draw dot, 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 like that. Now, what in the world's going on here? Put a big old, big old point. Well, it's not necessarily cut in half. What's it doing? Say it again. Going through the plane. Good. Okay, it's going through the plane. Do you see that? Now watch. Watch this. Pretend this tabletop right here. You guys watching? <laughs> I used to teach it a couple years. Um, this plane. Let's pretend this uh, table right here is a plane. All right, and it, it represents where a plane's located. All right, so that would be plane Q. This line right here, um, I didn't label it, but let's call it line L for line. Okay, let's say this line right here. What's it doing? It's going like this. Do you see it? Yeah. It's hitting the plane at that point. At point what? E. At point e. e, and it's going through. What's up with the dotted? Why the why the dotted? Because it's going through it. What do you think the dotted is? It's like the part that you can't see. All right, because like if you stood at an angle, you wouldn't see that whole ruler. If I was able to jam this through this table, I can't do it. Okay, if I was, I jam through the table. Right, and it goes through the other end. Are you watching? Come on, hey, pay attention. If it goes through the other end like this, there's going to be a part that's hidden. What part is hidden? This. That means it's going behind the plane. You see that? So it means it's going behind the plane, and this keeps going behind the plane like this. So this line and this line right here are two different things. And when I say that on YouTube, nobody's going to see it. So when I s this line right here is going through the plane, this line right here, what do you think? is on top of it, or we just say it's on it. Or sometimes they use the word in. Um, I like to say it's on it. So this line right here lies what? On the plane, and this line right here does what? Right. It goes through. Or sometimes they'll say this. They'll say it passes through. All right? You with me on that? Or it does what? When a line hits another line or it hits another plane or something. What's a big fancy word? It intersects. Good. And this right here would be the point. Guess what we would call it? The point of what? Intersection. Good. All right, so that's the point of intersection. You with me? So we say the line and the plane intersect each other. What if I had two planes that intersected each other? What do you think... Yeah, they would crash. Section. What do they form when two planes intersect? Watch. This piece of paper I'm holding up right here represents a plane, and this other one represents a plane. Pretend this was flat. I know it's flopping over a little bit, but get the, you know, use your imagination. All right, so if it hit like this, what does it form Like the, where it touches? Where do they touch each other? What's the, the common points? They form a what? No. Points. No, there's no triangle. Where do they where do they touch? I mean, look, all this stuff out here and out here, it's not touching this plane right here. Just the place. That, come on, pay attention, please. Come on, let's stop the silliness. Let's think a little bit. Just what's touching? What is touching? This plane and this plane are touching. They don't touch at a triangle. They don't make a triangle. If if I had some ink on the bottom of this, right, and I push it and I touch it and I let go, I would get a line. I would get a line out of this, wouldn't I? Does that make sense? So two planes that intersect each other, intersect each other at a what? At a line. Look at the bottom of page six. You got your books open? Look at the bottom of page six. I tried to draw this in my other class, and I didn't do a very good job at it. So just look at the bottom of page six. There are two planes, plane A and plane B. Do you see them? They intersect each other, and they intersect each other at a line. And that's important because they're going to ask you some questions about that. They're going to show you a picture of two lines intersecting or two planes intersecting each other. And they're going to say, what is the intersection of those two planes? And you would say line and, and number on page six, what would you say? Line what? It's the only thing there. That's an R, right? Yeah, it's line R. So you would say they intersect at line R. Make sense? Okay. Well, that's about it. I'm going to give you a worksheet to do. And um, instead of problems from the book, even though I gave you a book today, I just thought it would be a little easier with a worksheet. So just do your worksheet, and that's going to be due tomorrow.